Shalom, Yeshua, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessing to those that ask him, that's preach the word in all truth and sincerity, alone to Israelite foreigner brothers that look like the heathens, but the line and false side goes back to the nation of Israel, which the nation of Israel are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, through the prophecies and curses of Deuteronomy 28 chapter and throughout the Bible. And so this will be your call or my for the lesson. And on today's lesson will be entitled, The Truth Will Be Spoken Outside on the Streets. You know, I'm just going to go on some precepts and a uh, little willing. You brothers and few sisters out there be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimon Shai. You know, because, you know, um, contrary to popular belief, you know, the true prophets prophesied on the highways and byways, man, you know, because it's a scripture that says in Acts 7 and, 7 and 48 that um, <clears throat> it says, it's how be it the most hot door of nine temples made with hands, I said the prophet, right? Because Yahweh Bashem Oshad dwells within us, you know, the, the Lord dwells within his true prophets to bring out his message, his message, you know, and you know, the true prophets will be out on the highways of Bowie's, you know, preaching the word, man. You know, so I just want to go on to a lesson on it. And uh, once again, you know, Lord willing, you brothers and if your sister out there, be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. You know, and I'm going to start from the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. It says, wisdom cry without. She utter her voice in the streets. And right, and it's like that word without. You know, and it's talking about the wisdom of the Bible and you know, the wisdom of the scriptures of, that comes from Yahweh by Shimon Shai. You know, spare me one second, knock you. You know, <clears throat> uh, without is from the Hebrew word Chawataza, which means outside, you know, outward street, the outside. So, the wisdom, the truth will be speaking, will be preached outside. You know, it says, um, verse 21, it says, she cried in the chief place of concourse. And right, the chief place of concourse is where a lot of buying and selling is at, or where a lot of foot traffic is at, uh, on the, um, uh, your metropolitan type areas, you know, your, your, your malls, your shopping centers. You know, your Targets, your Walmarts, you know. It says, in the openings of the gates in the city, she uttered up her words saying, how long you simple ones will you love simplicity? And right, you know, because the simple ones implies to two-thirds of our people that don't want to repent. They want to still be living this, you know, they still want to be engulfed in, the, in, this, in this world, man. You know, they still want to celebrate all these pagan holidays, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving. You know, they still want to try to make this world at rest. You know, so they are in a state of simplicity. And the true prophets will condemn them from that, man. From For them being simple. The two-thirds of our people, the true prophets will condemn the two-thirds of our people for them being simple. You know, it says, in the scorners, <clears throat> delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge and right. You know, so, you know, the scorners, they delight in their scorning. You know, they like to scoff. At the true man, the Lord, they like to scoff at their own heritage, you know, and they hate knowledge, man, because they're fools, you know. Now, let's go to the next precept, because our Lord Yahweh Shai commanded, you know, us to go out, you know, on the highways and hedges. As it says in Luke 14, 23, it says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges. And compel them to come in, that my house may be, that my house, may be filled and right. So you know, highways and hedges. Look at those words. Look up highways first. <clears throat> highways is from the um, Greek word hodos, which means um, a travel way, a road, a way. You know, which will be the sidewalk in today's day. You know, cause. Looks like you. Now let's look up hedge. You know. 
Hedge is from the Greek word phragmos, phragmos, which means a hedge, a fence, that which separates, prevents two from coming together. And right, and that's the sidewalk separated from the street, which the sidewalk is separated from the, the actual street that the cars uh um socket the roads that the cars pass by in. And I just looked up, you know, hedge of a street and this came up, you know. So you got the sidewalk on the right hand side and you got the the road on the left, you know? And see? And this is a hedge. So that's time more, you know. Uh, the word is going to be preached outside on the streets, man. You know? It says, and compel them to come in and compel. Let's look at the word compel, you know. As the apostles, elders, a great millstone always taught us, you must go into the words to get understanding of them, you know. Compels from the Hebrew word, um, Greek word, um, anakazo, anakazo, which means to necessarily compel, drive to, constrain by force, by force threats, you know. So the Lord compels his elect to come in to repent, to come in the truth by threats, you know. If you don't, if you don't repent, then this is going to happen to you, you know. You're going to get judgment. You're going to, you're going to die the lake of fire. Do my threats that the Lord says, that the Lord speaks through his prophets to, to uh, cause the elect to repent, you know. That my, high, that my house may be fulfilled because it's another precept in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, you know, in the 11th verse. It said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, you know. So, you know, we, knowing the terror of Yahweh by Shimon Shai, we persuade men to repent, you know. But we are made manifest unto Yahweh, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness, man. You know, so, you know, we persuade men to, to repent, you know. Is it that word persuade? It's from the Greek word, paito, paito. Which means persuade, to persuade, to induce one's, one, to induce one by words to believe. And, of course, that's on the right-hand side, you know. Um, it says to, let me go to D, it says to persuade unto, i.e., um, move or induce one to persuasion to do something, man. You know? And that's by way of repentance. You know? Through the fear of Yahweh Bashimon Shah, man. You know? Now let's go to another precept in Matthew 22 and verse 9. It reads, Go ye therefore unto the highways and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. And bid means invite. And the marriage is when our Lord Yahweh Shai make his second return. He's going to gather the elect. They're going to be re reunited. And that's the marriage, you know. Because, you know, the nation of Israel is the um, the woman of the Most High. You know, we are, the, as it says in Jeremiah 62, you know. Jeremiah 62. It says, I have, I have likened the daughter of Zion, which is another name for the Israelites, to a calmly and delicate woman. Right, so, you know, we are, the nation of Israel is a woman in the eyes of the Most High Yahweh. So when Yahweh Shai comes back, you know, the marriage, he's going to uh, deliver the elect, and they're going to be joined to him, which will be the marriage, you know. And um, go to Morse precepts, it's Matthew 11. Verse 16, it reads, But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows. And right, you know, and children represents the prophets, you know, and their fellows represents other Israelites, you know, calling other Israelites to come into faith. You know, of course, starting with the elect, you know, and let's look at that word markets. The word markets is from the Greek word agora, which means any assembly, especially other people. This is a place of assembly for public debating, for elections, for trials, for buying and selling. 
for all kinds of businesses, marketplace, street, right? So the truth, once again, the truth will be spoke out, spoken out on the streets where a lot of buying and selling is, public debating, place of assembly, businesses, you know? And um, let's keep going on. Verse, uh, verse 17, it's saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced because the scriptures say, you know, um, you know, they, they sung, they, they, they shout, the, the elect was seen a new song, which is his truth. You know, it's just a saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and you have not lamented and right, you know, and, um, you have not danced. You have not lamented. That's talking about the two thirds of Israel. Basically the truth is not resonated with them. So they don't want to repent. You know, just like, you know, with the actual song, you know, when you play a song, some people, some people like the song, some people don't. So same with this truth. You know, the truth is only for the elect, but for the non-elect, the two thirds of our people, the wicked Israelites, this truth, it doesn't compel them to repent because it doesn't resonate with their spirit, you know, because it's this precept and wisdom of Solomon says, uh, wisdom shall not enter into a malicious soul, you know? So, um, this truth is only for the elect. Now, I'm going to one precept and one account when uh, Jeremiah, you know, um, go to Jeremiah 17 and 19. It says, Thus said Yahweh unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah can't come in, and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem, man, you know, because the, the, the gates were the, was where the judges was at, the, the judges of Israel. So, you know, a lot of stuff going on around, around that area. So the prophets were, were also by the gates as well, which was outside, you know. And I'm going to um, read this quick article I had um, looked up some months back, you know, just to uh, give more um, info, you know, on the, on the um on the gates of the city and stuff, you know. So just give me one sec. I don't want to find it real quick, you know. Yeah, I found it right here. Akim says, and this is from GodQuestions.org. You know, it's a good website. You know, um, it says, what is the significance of a city gate in the Bible? You know, it says, besides being part of a city's protection against invaders, city gates were places of central activity in biblical times. It was it was at the city gates that important business business transactions were made, court was convened, and public announcements were heralded. Accordingly, it is natural that the Bible frequently speaks of sitting in a gate or of the activities that took place at the gate. In Proverbs one, wisdom is personified at the head of noisy streets, he cries out, and the gateways of the city she make of her speech. She make of her speech, verse twenty one, to spread her word to the to the maximum number of people wisdom took to the gates, man. You know, so this proves that the truth was spoken outside, which were in the gates. You know, as I said, where a lot of business transactions was made, public announcements and court was convened, you know, of course by the judges of the gates, which were Israelites, man. So just more, you know, more information on how the truth will be spoken outside, man. So, yeah, I just want to make a cool lesson on that. You know, a little one, I was edified. And until uh, next time, shalom.